The terms AR, VR, MR, and now XR are being thrown around a lot these days, aren't they? So what exactly do they mean, and what do these Vitra 1 glasses really do? Today I'm going to answer that for you with this Vitra 1 XR glasses review. XR, or extended reality, is often used somewhat interchangeably with AR, augmented reality, and MR, mixed reality. These are slightly different terms from virtual reality, which most of you probably know as this. Uh, maybe a little less ancient. Okay, yeah, like the Quest 3, something like that. But these are obviously not that headset, and are generally not capable of the same things. But where AR, MR, and XR cross over are basically where there's some overlay placed on top of what you see or are able to interact with in some way with the real world. And I argued this in another video of mine, that I think MR is more about the interaction, whereas AR is just altering it slightly for a lack of better phrasing. So I think you can also bundle in XR into that terminology pool. Again, these are my opinions on those terms though. Now with all of that jargon out of the way, what exactly do the Vitra ones offer? Let's explore that as we often do on the channel with a review as fast as possible, giving you all the good, all the bad, and a final thought at the end. And just before we get into what I like, let me say that these glasses were provided by Vitra, but that all opinions expressed are my own, just like my X-Real review. And you should be able to see that in my dislikes portion of the video. Now here are a few specs I'll throw up, as well as some key features and what you get inside the box. Now let's talk about what I like about the glasses, as well as how they work. First is obviously the picture, because these are micro OLED projectors that are reflected off of a mirror, as far as I can understand anyway, and that means you get true blacks and very high contrast levels. And although I'm not really able to capture it well on screen, if you're not familiar with this tech, the idea is that you basically get a central image hovering in your central visual field. And the magic sauce is some kind of sorcery that makes your brain think that the image is as small as a phone held up to your face, or as big as a home theater projector setup if you're maybe 10 plus feet away from the wall. Besides the display, the build quality and presentation of the Vitchers is top notch. You might even say that the build itself is the Thor's hammer of these types of glasses. I'm just kidding. Don't use a real hammer here. You will have a bad day. I promise. But seriously, I've never been one to knock any product because it comes in a recycled cardboard box or anything. But let's be real. If you're spending hundreds of dollars on something, doesn't it feel nice to get something special or premium when you open it? And that's exactly what you get when you open this hard case, which includes a USB-C cable, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. The glasses themselves also come inside that hard case, which has a convenient magnetic compartment to store that cable. And and while the glasses themselves do have a good amount of plastic on them, you can see that the temples look to be a solid piece of plastic and don't feel as though they'll crumble or crack under pressure. And if you stay tuned for a future review comparing these to the X-Reels, you'll find out exactly why that's important. Something else I like about these glasses are the dimming glass or the electrochromic glass. There are only two settings as far as I can tell, but they work well enough if you're in a well-lit environment or outside and have trouble seeing the screen. Basically, it's one quick press and you're back in business. Although if that's not enough for you, they do sell these extra lens covers. Another cool thing about the same button is if you're holding the button, it toggles into a VR mode. And that refers to side-by-side -side VR mode, meaning that if you watch a YouTube video that's for VR, it'll look like it's 3D to you. As far as I know, there are also some PC games out there that support this type of VR. But know that its selection of games is limited, and it's not the same thing as doing something like Steam VR from your PC. Still, it's a nice to have. And speaking of nice to haves, there's a pin option which locks the picture in place as you move your head around in space. It's not perfect as it can drift across said space, but when you move your head back to that same spot or angle, it'll reappear there. And I haven't seen this feature in other glasses. I've also been told that a future desktop app, as well as a mobile app, will help to improve this feature. Speaking of apps, I know some of you out there aren't keen on installing them, but I'm happy to report that the Vitcher app wasn't required to work with my phone, and when I plugged it in, it didn't ask me to sign over my life with all the permissions. One of the last positive points I'll mention here is that Vitcher has a full ecosystem for its users, like the neckband, which I'll review at a future date, which you can check out in the description below and essentially acts as a mobile Android TV and also allows you to shrink the image to a corner of the FOV to your liking. And then there's the mobile dock, which interestingly and surprisingly allows you to connect two pairs of glasses so that you and another person can enjoy the same content together, whether that's a co-op game, movie, or streaming video. Mind you, this is a pretty expensive setup, but no other glasses company, to my knowledge, has this capability, at least as of this video. 
Oh, and before I forget, I lied about the last positive point because there is one feature I'm not really using, but can definitely come in handy. It's the built-in diopter adjustment. So if you have relatively mild visual impairment, you can move these dials to focus the image in the lenses. Don't be mistaken though, it only adjusts the image that's projected in the middle of the screen and not everything you see in the glasses, like prescription glasses. But it is a cool feature to have and it does have its use cases. For example, maybe you're not quite ready to go to sleep and you want to catch a little bit of your favorite show. Well, you also don't want to take out your contact lenses or put on your glasses to watch something. This is the perfect setup for you. You can avoid those contact lenses and you don't have to wear your glasses. And if you prefer, Vitcher does have prescription inserts that you can take to an optometrist or you can buy the lenses directly through Vitcher's websites. But I will say this, I've not reviewed a product to date that wasn't without its flaws and the Vitcher ones are no exception. So what didn't I like? The first dislike I had about the Vitchers is is probably a minor one to most people. It's the proprietary USB-C cable. And don't get me wrong, there are actually some pros to this design because you don't have to fish around for the connection like some other glasses. My gripe is that it's simply a personal stance against proprietary technology. But if you consider this magnetic attachment that's used to connect the glasses, a neutral point, one thing that would have been nice to have is a braided cable. Definitely not a deal breaker by any means. My second dislike about the glasses is also technically not specific to the glasses, but applies to all glasses of this type. It's it's the limited FOV. While the vitreous provide an astonishingly beautiful image, it's limited to the middle of those lenses or your central vision. And you can't put that into the corner of your eye if you know what I mean. Even with something like an ambient mode that they do have with the neckband, you can't push it into your peripheral vision. And finally, another non-specific dislike is the price. These things are pretty hefty in that category. And while I strongly believe that this dislike will eventually disappear as more people adopt these types of devices and the cost of the technology comes down, it's not one that I can omit, even if the company did send these to me. So what's the final word? Do I recommend these glasses? Yes and no. Yes, if you want that personal home theater through the glasses with crisp colors and are willing to accept the high cost of entry and limitations I mentioned earlier. Of course, not everything is so simple and there's nuance to this recommendation too. The Vitcher's ecosystem, as far as I know, is the most expansive in this AR XR type of glasses space. So you are buying into that system if you get these glasses. You'll just have to pay for it. And on the flip side, no, I don't recommend them if you don't accept those limitations and aren't willing to spend a pretty penny buying into all of this. But before we wrap up today, I want you to consider what I said in my X-Real Airs long-term review. These types of glasses aren't the Apple Vision Pros, but they are also a fraction of the price. So if you do want to see what all the buzz is about, I do think the asking price is somewhat reasonable, just not for everyone. You know what else is reasonable? You hitting the like and subscribe buttons to help the channel out. Thanks, and why not check out this review next. GG.